Do you find yourself running out of time to accomplish your work? Are you spending time doing things that you're not that good at? There are effective ways to outsource these tasks so you can focus on your business. This is the Virtual Success Show. We bring the inside scoop on outsourcing success for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. And now, here are your hosts, Matt Maloof and Barbara Turley. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Virtual Success, where I'm joined by my fantastically insightful co-host, Matt Maloof. How are you, Matt? I'm well, Bob. How are you? Very good. Very good. I say that because, you know, every week I just get so many insights from you that I've implemented in my business. So I'm, I'm stealing tips along the way as we do these podcasts together. I'm writing note to self. Think of, think of opening for Bob. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did I catch you off guard there? <laughs> my magnificent co-host. <laughs> yeah, you can use that for the next show. <laughs> So this is episode two, everyone, in our communication series. So if you uh, haven't listened to the last episode um, where we discussed that, you know, we're going to talk about this topic of communication, such a huge topic that we've decided to split it into three shows. Um, And this is episode two, where we're going to deal with how to give effective feedback with emphasis on the word effective, because giving feedback can be quite a challenging experience, especially when the feedback has negatives in it. Um, but, you know, to set this up really with communication, uh, it's it's really a three part um, show that we're doing. And in episode one, we discussed how to set up a task for success in the first place and your communication from day one. So it's really worth listening to that episode if you haven't been there yet. Today, obviously, we're going to talk about giving effective feedback. And then in episode three, coming up soon, we're going to talk about how to have the tough conversations, which everybody shies away from, of course, naturally. But it's really important to know how to do that effectively. So, Matt, I'm excited about today's one yet again. Uh, Me too. Me too. And I guess just to set up today's show on, on providing effective feedback, I think as a business owner, you need to be open to giving effective and constructive feedback and receiving constructive feedback as well. And so um, as you're learning the skill of this, it's it's really, really important to understand that it is vital to business success. I see so many business owners that struggle and it's because they have a very closed mindset and they're not open to either giving feedback, which is vital for the growth of their people, or receiving feedback, which is vital for the, the business and their own growth. So I think this, this area of communication and feedback is, is one that I don't think is spoken enough about in the business community, but it's, 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 it would really be one of the rocks of business success. You know, and Matt, I, I think as well, let's be honest, I don't think it's something that as human beings we're naturally drawn to. You know, I think we naturally struggle. I, I know I definitely did anyway. Giving feedback and even receiving feedback is something as an entrepreneur that I've personally struggled with in the past. And I've had to learn through, you know, multiple experiences of being forced to do it, how to do it in a more effective way and to see it in a more positive light that it doesn't necessarily have to be a horrible conversation. It can actually be a really nurturing, collaborative and such a great experience when you learn how to communicate properly in the feedback in the giving feedback thing, because it's a, it's a two way thing. Obviously, you're giving feedback to your staff member, but as part of giving effective feedback, you have to be able to get feedback from them about their experience of the whole thing, too. And I think that's what makes it um, a two way street, really, which can be hard. Correct. And in my experience, the resistance to give or receive feedback is, is often um, a result of an underlying fear. And it actually is an underlying result of, of, two, of two fears. One is a fear of rejection. People don't want, don't want to feel rejected. And so giving or receiving feedback brings up that, that fear of rejection. And the second one is a, is a fear of not being liked. Yeah. And so, you know, if I give the feedback, my team member won't like me or, you know, what will they say about me? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, from personal experience, I know that's that's my one. The fear of rejection is not one that I personally have felt in the past, but 
I, I definitely would have that feeling of, and I don't know whether this is a women thing. I know some of the women on the call listening to this will, will resonate here, but that fear of not being liked. So thinking, I don't want my VA to go off and tell her friends that her boss is a total bitch. You know, that kind of feeling, yeah. you know, and you think, I just don't want her saying that about me because I don't want to feel like a bitch. But when you're irritated with a task not being done, you know, there is a bit of a, there is that irritation that comes up and you, you know, it's how you handle the feedback that's really important to get right. So I thought to kick off, you know, as always, I think it's really good to have an actual like live case studies. And the beauty of us doing this podcast together is I get a lot of actual live case studies that happen for our clients. And, you know, it happens across the board. We get feedback and we see issues coming up and we can see in the, um, what's fascinating is we see in the, in the, um, our feedback forms or when clients put in support tickets in the language that they use, we can actually see the fears. So for example, a big thing that we would get would be clients putting in support tickets with a sort of a, a sort of a complaint, but more like a feedback saying, Oh, my VA is doing this, this, and this wrong. I've tried to explain. And then at the end, it'll say, now, please don't tell my VA. I really don't want them to know that I, that I, that I um, came to you to, or complained. And our response to that is kind of, well, then what is the use of the, I'm not sure where they want us to go with that, because really, if we don't communicate effectively or help them to mediate that discussion together, then they're not going to get a resolution at all. And it has just turned into a whinge fest. That's honestly what it turns into. So that's really, really a big problem for us. And it's actually, um, if you, if you, if we go deeper on this, it's, it's a lose, lose strategy. Yep. It, it, you know, the, the VA loses because they're not understanding how that they can improve or, or how to actually be the valued team member that, that you're asking them to be. And you lose because you're sitting there in a state of frustration and dissatisfaction. And it, it, you're probably having to, to do the work yourself where if you had the constructive conversation and gave the feedback, uh, not always, but in, in most cases, you'll see improvement. Yeah. And you know, what's interesting, I was thinking as you were talking there, I think what happens when they put feedback like that in for our clients anyway, or support tickets, the bit that comes at the end, and it'll sometimes say, oh, please don't tell my VA. And you can see the desperation in the comment. And I think what happens is the very act of writing down their frustration and feeling like they have voiced it gives them momentary relief from it. So they feel like they don't need to have that conversation with the VA, but it's going to keep coming up again and again because they haven't, the discussion hasn't happened. So the frustration is going to come back if we don't actually deal with it in a direct and collaborative way where, yes, the VA has to be involved because otherwise we're not going to get any results. Um, The other thing also I want to tackle on this particular episode is a situation where sometimes people feel like they're having the feedback conversation, but it goes something like this. And this is an actual live case study of where I actually spoke myself to a, to a client of ours. And the the client said, well, I did give feedback. And I said, well, what, what exactly did you say? So it was to do with a landing page that came back that wasn't right. And she said, well, I just told him that it just wasn't right. It's just not right. And I said, well, what about it was not right? And the problem really, we unearthed the problem there. And then she couldn't actually even articulate to me what was not right about it. It just wasn't right. And she said to him, look, I, I just told him, look, let's just forget that one. And well, let's just move on to another task. Now, there are a whole pile of impl- implications of attacking a conversation in that way from an emotional standpoint of the person receiving the feedback about their ability, about their worth, about what you think of them. Um, you know, it's kind of dismissive and it's just totally ineffective communication. So we've got to try and give steps and strategies here for how to communicate literally almost a script of how to, to, to deal with that conversation in a better way. And I think um, back to episode one of these three mm. um, that we're doing here, Bob, in that, in that um, situation, my recommendation would be always to, well, let's go back and see how the task was set up originally. Yes. Yeah. Most, actually, most clients don't want to hear that. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, I mean, part of the coaching that I do, I always say when you're pointing the finger at someone else, there's three fingers often pointing back at the person that you really should be looking at, yes. which is yourself. And, you know, it's, it's not a blame game here. You know, at the end of the day, we're all working together to achieve the, the same goal. It's just, so we've got to sit there and go, okay, well, 
Where, where did this break down? Did, was was the task handed over in an effective manner? Did we follow the system that we know works to set our VAs up to win? Now, if you tick yes to that, then the next question is, well, okay, where is this breaking down? Where is this breaking down? So in the, in the landing page example you're giving uh, there, Barb, like, okay, what's, like you said, well, what specifically is wrong with it? And if the VA is not made aware of what specifically is, is not right, how can they ever improve? How can they ever get it right? Absolutely. They won't be able to because it's mind reading. Exactly. But I think exactly. The, the feeling with that particular situation was, the feeling of that particular client was, I just don't have time for this. I don't have time to sit down and give this person feedback. Now, I actually said to her, if you keep with that belief, then you will still be doing it yourself in a year's time. And if that's the route you want to take, that's fine. But the investment you make here and now in getting success here can pay dividends massively down the track. But it takes you doing this feedback thing. And feedback is the initial stages of giving feedback anyway, not when something has escalated, but are non-blaming, non-accusing, collaborative, but you have to be quite direct. You have to say, in my view anyway, you have to say, hey, the results are not really working for me. It's not quite what I'm um, needing or wanting. So I want to talk to you about how do we work together to see where the holes are and what's happening that we're not either, you know, maybe we didn't set the task up correctly or maybe I haven't, you know, we haven't communicated back and forth enough on this to make help you understand where things are going wrong. Now, from my perspective, this little area here, here's what I would have done. You know, here's what I was thinking. That sort of language, you know, is very collaborative. It's not accusing in any way. And I think, too, um, particularly if you've got virtual assistants in the Philippines, they have a high uh, desire to please. So whilst you can be very direct with them, using that, the, those few softeners mm. in there in your language enhances the feedback and they, they actually step up real quick. Well, they open up more as well. And let's talk for a second here about f the Philippines in particular. You know, shame is a major heavy emotion. You know, the, the Filipinos feel that quite a lot. And if you, you know, they, they don't take criticism so well. You know, they, they find it difficult. But if it's done in this way, in my experience anyway, they light up because they feel like we're working together and that you're sort of taking your part and they can take their part openly rather than getting defensive. Because if it's accusing or blaming, they'll go defensive and shut down and they won't give you, you won't get out of them what you really need, in my experience anyway. Yeah, mine too. So this mine approach too. really works really well. And I would encourage the listeners to just think about, you know, being direct in this softening language, but without without being a wallflower, like you can't blame yourself because we see clients doing this too. They blame it all on themselves. It has to be a two-way thing when you're in this feedback stage. I'm also going to recommend here, this is where I think turning the video camera on and being able to see someone face-to-face -face can be vitally important. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, if you can't, re there's something to be said about being able to read someone's body language in response to something. And so often, you know, over time, you'll become more receptive to hearing it in their voices and the like. But I just think just switch the video on, allow them to see you because they're going to see, they might think they hear frustration or anger or whatever it might be. But in actual fact, when they see your facial expressions and you see theirs, it's a totally different um, meaning you put to the conversation. So I think that I would uh, highly recommend using the video uh, when you're doing this with your virtual teams, when you're giving feedback. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, well, that's definitely how I approach things anyway. I mean, I think as well, that would be sort of how I see the initial, you know, the initial feedback conversation. But then there has to be, you know, after that, you can't just have that one conversation and then think to yourself after the call, okay, well, that's dealt with. You know, what's going to happen is you need to have that feedback conversation. And then over the following couple of weeks, you need to make it very clear to your virtual assistant, say, look, over the next couple of weeks, I'd like us to really stay close on this one. And I want to get feedback from you along the way of, you know, again, it's going back to the how you should report back to me on how it's going so that we can get to a point where I feel you feel empowered to do the job, a fantastic job. And I feel relaxed enough to let it go. And I want to work with you to get to that point. That's really collaborative. 
you know, as you were saying that, Barbara, just if I rewind a little bit to what we were saying before about the, the landing page incident where I just don't have the time to do this, you know, I, I'm almost having this premonition that the next conversation uh, clients are having with you is, um, I don't think a VA can work for me. I'm so glad you said that because that's exactly what she said to me. I did have this conversation with a client and she said to me, I just don't think a VA is going to work for me. I mean, and she mentioned another friend of hers, such and such told me that Filipino VAs never work out for her either. Yeah. So there was a very strong belief there that she was, and actually she did use the term, I feel like I'm wasting my money. You know, and so, very and, challenging for me to deal with as someone who is in this business and sees how he had the, the, the slip between success and failure is so much, it's so little. And it's, it's like a tweak in the, in the mindset and the right direction can get you explosive success. And so I think if you, if you hear what Barbara and I are saying to you all today and in these episodes is that whilst a team of VAs or a VA can speed your success up in your business so, to, to, to new heights, it takes time. You have to invest the time up front to, to build the relationship and to enable yourself to, to delegate and let go. If you're not willing to invest the time, it won't matter whether it's a VA, uh, or someone you employ sitting next to you in the office, you don't invest that time and they will fail. They'll never be able to do it as well as you will. They'll always, you know, there'll always be a reason and you'll end up just keeping, um, keeping on, keeping on. And you'll, you'll actually become the bottleneck in your business. Yeah, because you'll go through the hiring and firing cycle and eventually you'll end up going back to doing it all yourself or paying a lot of money to an agency or, and maybe not getting any better results sometimes because you still haven't commun- learned to communicate effectively. And the interesting thing about this feedback situation is this can spiral out of control. So let's say you've had, you know, you've tried to give feedback and it's been in that kind of, I call it useless communication way because some, saying something's not right or forget it, let's just move on is a very, very negative form of feedback. So let's say you do that and then the next task you have the same experience and it fails and you do that again. What starts to happen is you get a, you get a vicious downward cycle. The person that is working with you, the virtual assistant starts to feel low about themselves, starts to, you start to resent each other. And they can lose respect for you and you lose respect for them. And the, the, the relationship is almost, it's just on a hiding to nothing at that stage when you allow that to kind of escalate. I feel anyway, it's hard to right. rein, rein it back in. No, I 100% agree. 100% agree. So let's, 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 let's put some practical steps in place here that can help uh, everyone here in the, mm. in the feedback process. So I think step number one is you need, you need to get clarity on where where they've broken, where the process has broken down. What specifically are you unhappy with? I think number two is then, it's as uh, the quote from Stephen Covey's book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, you need to seek to understand before seeking to be understood. You need to get clarity on what, what they did to get to their outcome. Because if you don't understand what your VA did to get to their outcome, you don't know how to actually refine or tweak it you're you're only actually just looking at the end product you're not going back through and going well this actually went off the rails here and if i help them with this little piece it will just put them on track and get them to where we want to go i think third is to understand that you need to slow down in order to speed up and what i mean by that is through the feedback process is you need to go back step by step there may be a retraining phase. There may be something that you need to actually refine in your system through this process. There may be a uh, something you both need to shift in your communication. It could be like we talked about in the um, uh, first episode here, and it could be you know, instigating reporting mechanisms so that you, you actually pick this up sooner and can keep things on track. So, I mean, they're the, they're the sort of three steps that I would be recommending here. And then, the, the last one is just in, as Barbara was saying before, it's in the style of communication. You've got to sit down and you've got to really be mindful of your language. Take the time to go through this with them. Communicate effectively. As I suggested, I'd, I'd have the video on for this because that can be, be even more effective. And want them to become better. Your mindset has got to be that if I invest a little bit of my time here with the right person, 
that they will enhance them and help them become better, which in turn means the task doesn't come back to me and it gets done the right way each time. And, you know, I'm just thinking, uh, you know, to add on to that is seeing yourselves, even if it's just you and one VA, see yourselves as a team. Yeah. The two of you are a team. It's not, you know, them and me. Because you see, that the them and me conversation is very different from a team conversation. You know, so even when you're having a meeting, it's how are we going to work together to get success so that we can fire together rather than, you know, I'm really not happy with what you're doing and here's what you're doing wrong. Now go, you go and fi- you go fix that. You know, it's a di- that's a different mindset to be in and to see yourselves as a team, even if it's just you and one VA is very powerful. It will change the energy of the entire relationship and your VA will feel that even if you don't actually communicate that they'll feel that sense of being part of your team together. So I just want to add one last thing to this. And it was, it's in light of that, that comment we were just talking about, which is a VA won't work for me. And I, and I see this and as, and Barbara, I'm sure you see this all the time that, that it doesn't work for me. Yeah. It won't work for my business. Doesn't work for me. Yeah. so just a bit of context, like, you know, I've literally now coached in excess of a thousand businesses worldwide. I, you know, I, I see what, ha- what works and what doesn't. And I've seen VAs work in every industry that I've coached. I've coached from building companies to services to manufacturing to there's so many, such a broad spectrum of industries. And I've seen VAs work in all of them. And the common denominator that between success and failure is the, the owner, manager, or leader's ability and mindset coming into making it work. If your mindset is that this is going to work and I'm going to do whatever it takes to make it work, which means, you know what, we're going to make some mistakes along the way and there may be some, you know, challenging conversations and I've got to slow down and become better. It works every time. But if your expectation is that I'm going to get this person and I'm just going to dump a whole heap of stuff onto them and they're just going to know how to do it. And that if they don't, then my conclusion is it doesn't work for me. It won't work for you. And I just really wanted to emphasize that because it's so important. Um, this feedback part is really what differentiates in a lot of ways success or failure with your VA. Oh, I 100% agree. 100%. The mindset is number one and your ability to communicate effectively is number two. All the other stuff you can both learn. Tasks, skills, processes, all that sort of thing you can work on together. These, the two things, the two big things that are hardest to change in yourself are mindset and communication. So those are the things that are really worth working on. And, you know, I'll just finish on this, you know, like I said before, at the beginning of this episode, it's not something that I feel I was naturally good at either. You know, I really had to push outside of my comfort zone when I started doing this first to have effective feedback conversations and I'll be honest I still I still don't really like it I have to kind of work myself up to it but it's about centering myself feeling like it's a team conversation collaboration and just being open try not to be too business-like in this conversation I think you almost need to to sort of drop a notch below business-like and yes you got to be business-like but you got to sort of see the nuances of what might be going on in the background so you know the the video on watching the body language is the person overwhelmed is there something else going on all that sort of thing great great sort of cues for you to figure out what's really going on there mm. and and to add to that Bob, what, what what i i do with all of our vas is in their induction yeah. i actually um let them know that through this entire process of the time that we work together i will be providing feedback and this is the way that I will do it. And that at times, whilst I'm moving really fast because we're a fast growing company, that if my communication is fast or a bit direct and, and, and you think it's rude, please tell me because it's certainly not my intention, but my intention is to be able to provide feedback so that we can both grow. And that's actually part of the opening induction I have with every single person that joins our organization. So when that, those conversations happen, they're not a surprise to them. Um, that's a great tip. I, that's know, a great idea. I really think that that's a fabulous idea. And the induction, yeah. Set them up for success and know what's coming. That's right. So, And if they don't like that, then they should actually probably 
leave well, now. It keeps them on their toes, like in a good way. This, you know, they know what's coming. And as you say, if they don't like that, they're going to end up leaving. And we've had that situation happen in our training program. We've had people who walk on the second day of training because of the orientation I do on the first day. Yeah. Because I'm like, here's what's, here's what you, you know, I just need you to know that here's what we expect and here's what our clients expect. And, you know, here's, if, if this resonates with you, you're going to love this company. And some of them, it doesn't resonate and they walk. And that's fine with us because we say, well, we'd rather lose them now than lose them, you know, have problems with clients down the track. So yes, in the induction, definitely a fantastic tip. And it really leads us in, you know, episode three, I think is going to be a fantastic one because we're going to deal with, you know, the tough conversation when something is just spiraling out of control, you've tried everything and you're sort of staring down the barrel of maybe potentially removing the person or, you know, having this, I call it the come to Jesus talk, which is like, you know, the, we've talked about this already. We've, you know, and I think, um, that can be a, an extremely challenging communication style to get right. And most people will shy away from it and just fire someone without actually even having a conversation. Yeah. It's going to be a great show. Yeah. <laughs> so we will uh, see you guys um, on the next show for that. Be sure as well, make sure that you follow us on iTunes, subscribe to the show. And if you're finding it useful, remember to share it because lots of people are struggling with this area of outsourcing and virtual teams and even staff delegating in general. So we, we're giving some great strategies here to help everyone get success in this area. So and, we'll, we'll, yeah. and we'd love to hear your, your stories about feedback that may have gone well and, and maybe feedback that didn't go well so that, so that everyone can learn in the community also. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. I'd love to hear some of those stories. Okay, so until the next show, guys, have a great week and we'll see you for Tough Conversations next episode. Thanks, Matt. You, thanks, Bob. Talk soon. Thank you for listening to the Virtual Success Show. If you found this show helpful, take a moment to share it with a friend so that we can all grow together. Find out more about the inside scoop on outsourcing success by going to our website, virtualsuccessshow.com. Until next time, thanks for listening.